Greetings, our briefing is dedicated to exposing of facts of the aggressor state. The mouthpiece of this untruthful garbage that fills the information space was the official representative of the Russian authorities, the secretary of the Russian Security Council, and a graduate of the Russian State Security Committee, former head of the Russian Federal Security Service, Nikolai Patrushev. Patrushev made a series of statements which were spread by the Russian state agency Russia Today to the whole world, containing frank slanders against Ukraine and partner states. In particular, Patrushev lied when he said that the United States and Great Britain were allegedly recruiting international terrorists to participate in hostilities on the territory of Ukraine. This information is total nonsense, like most of everything reported by the state mouthpieces of Russia. Patrushev's statement that Ukraine has allegedly turned into the world center of ultra-right extremism is also a lie. He probably needs to look around Russia and see what exactly the Russian far-right represents and what ideas they support. Also lie is the information that the former head of the British government, Lee Truss, sent a message to the US Secretary of State Antony Blinken after the Nord Stream explosion. Everything is done, Patrushev said. According to international investigative journalists, this report is dated last year and has nothing to do with the events around the Nord Stream pipeline. There are also false statements that Ukraine is creating a dirty bomb. Moreover, it is very interesting that the intensity of statements about a dirty bomb has dropped significantly. For the previous two or three weeks, every day this nonsense was repeated by mouthpieces of propaganda. Now it is reported somewhere with an interval of two or three or four days in order to keep the topic on the surface. At the same time as the Russian propaganda stated, I quote, the Ukrainian regime gave up these plans after they were exposed by Russia. Ukraine has never prepared any dirty bombs, and in any case, they have desired to lower the level of support for Ukraine from international partners. Another lie is that the Russian state channel Russia24 frankly distorted the news report after the Ukrainian armed forces shot down a Russian helicopter, and this video was published in Ukrainian media. Russia24 published a report that allegedly a Ukrainian helicopter was shot down in the Konstantinivka district. Although the video clearly shows that this was a helicopter that served the armed forces of the aggressor. Trying to support the wave of lies, Russian propagandists resort to outright fakes. In particular, propagandist Solovyo published the cover of the Indian magazine Ananda Wikatan, which depicts the president of Ukraine. But if you go to the archive of this Indian edition, which does exist and try to find such a cover, then there is no such release. That is an outright lie that serves to support the narrative that Russian propaganda is trying to spread about the supposed neo-Nazism prevailing in Ukraine. In order to justify the status about neo-fascism in Ukraine, the propagandist Solovyo no longer knows how to explain what is not there. Quote, this neo-Nazism interwent with ultra-liberalism and acquired the features of liberal fascism, where in the forefront of fighters for nationalist ideas are homosexuals who deny the very essence of human nature. This stream of lies is outright fake, it contradicts even elementary logic, not to mention the political science opinion that liberals and fascists can never, in principle, create any alliances. But scientific opinion does not matter to Russian propaganda. The only thing it matters is to mix together as many scary words as possible in one message, so that the Russian consumer believes in the nonsense that is being promoted in the Kremlin. Traditionally, Russian propaganda uses the services of discredited expert speakers. On the air of Solovyo, the so-called former US Marine Corps scout Scott Ritter was once again as a guest. If to read about this man, you will find out that he was convicted of sexual offenses in the past and even served time in prison. And finally, this is not the first time that Russian propagandists have been trying to invent their own separate Donbass identity in order to make it easier to explain the annexation of these territories. In their telegram channels, they created a heading Recipes of Donbass and came up with Donbass Borscht. Thus, they are trying to create a separate cultural cuisine. They are trying to neutralize the efforts of Ukraine to fix Borscht as our cultural heritage. It once again proves that there is no limit to the primitiveness of Russian propaganda. I traditionally urge not to believe lies from Russia, but to trust the Ukrainian telethon, 
Ukrainian local authorities, military and political leadership. Glory to Ukraine!